This is the Forbes Quick Neurological Examination. I'm Dr Rayburn Forbes, a practicing consultant neurologist. This examination is a quick screening examination for non-neurologists. It should be helpful to people in primary care or general practice and also hospital doctors who need a quick way of, of looking for important positive or negative findings. The video clip with this audio can be found at neurologyfeeds.com. The seven steps in this examination will take approximately one minute with practice. The seven steps are observing the patient walk, number two, talk, three, vision, four, face, five, upper limb, six, lower limb, and seven, anything that your intelligence and wit tells you is important. So first, observe the patient walking in and sitting beside you. And the examination can be conducted with the patient sitting in a chair with socks and shoes off. If a patient can walk in, unencumbered and sit down, there is a low probability of any serious problem affecting locomotion. Next, observe the patient talking and listen to their history. And if someone can give you a history and seem to understand your questions, there is a low probability of a serious problem. Remembering, of course, that language function occupies a large part of the dominant hemisphere. Next, check their vision. And if someone has been at an optician recently, and the optician is satisfied, there's a low probability of serious neuro-ophthalmologic disease. However, you need to check things yourself at times, and if you do a handheld Snellen from six feet, check both temporal fields with each index finger raised into the field, as the video will show. Check eye movements up and down, side to side, looking for sustained nystagmus, and then check with the ophthalmoscope for papilledema. Remembering the best way to approach the optic disc is in a diagonal fashion as though you're aiming for the opposite mastoid process and when a retinal venar artery comes into view you track it down to the middle. Papilledema is a serious sign and if present mandates urgent action. Next check their face muscles. You could ignore most of the facial muscles except for eye closure and lip closure. If someone can screw their eyes up tight and you are unable to prise them open that is normal. Similarly if someone can purse their lips and when you test each side of their mouth and they're unable to, to and you're unable to prise them open, again this is normal. In Bell's palsy there's weakness of eye and lip closure. In a stroke, then there's only weakness of lip closure. In the upper limb assessment, there are three moves. Hold the arms out in front, palms up at the ceiling, close the eyes, observe for ten seconds for pronator drift. If the arms stay in the same position, this is normal and is probably the best single screening test for the upper limb. When they open their eyes, get them to touch the tip of their nose with their finger with, and do the same with the other hand. And again, if there's no intention tremor, that's good. Check shoulder abduction strength. I would generally avoid the upper limb reflexes as I don't think they add to a quick assessment. Next, check the lower limb. With the patient seated, get them to lift their knee high up so that the, f the foot comes off the ground and push down hard. This checks the hip flexion muscle. In spinal cord disease, for example, hip flexion often is the earliest sign, and if there is normal strength, again, this reduces the probability of serious disease. I often check knee extension, because someone who's got normal hip flexion strength and knee extension strength should have no problem with standing or walking. The ankle jerk is done last, and the commonest cause for an ankle jerk is that the patient is helping you by co-contracting the tibialis anterior muscle, which is the main dorsiflexor of the foot. And if you see the tibialis anterior tendon prominent under the skin on the dorsum of the foot, then you're not going to get the ankle jerk until that relaxes. The plantar response should always be done because if you have an extensor plantar response, again, this mandates action. The best way to do the plantar is to stroke firmly the lateral board of your foot with your own thumb or with the blunted end of a tendon hammer. And if the toe flexes, that is normal. If the toe extends and extends on the second time you do it, and even the third time you do it, i.e. is reproducible, this is abnormal and mandates action. Lastly, you've got to keep your wits about you and I'm just making point seven in that if there are things you think are relevant, go ahead and do them. So for example, in an acute headache, you may wish to lie them down and check for meningism, a suspected stroke, you might check their blood pressure, heart sounds, pulse rate, or if someone's got maybe you think an ulnar nerve or a median nerve, a more detailed examination might be appropriate. But that, in summary, is the Forbes Quick Neurological Exam. Here are those seven points again. Walk, talk, vision, which is acuity, field, eye movement, discs, face, which is just eye closure, lip closure, upper limb, pronator drift, finger nose test, shoulder abduction, 
lower limb, hip flexion, knee extension, ankle jerk, plantar response, seven, whatever your wits and intelligence tell you. Thanks for listening. Create your very own video podcast from PowerPoint. Log on to authorstream.com. It's absolutely free.